Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in today for another episode of the Entrepreneur Mindset Show. My name is Florian Lungo and I'm so delighted that you join us today. Today we're going to really look at one of the topics that I believe are a little bit more sensitive in something that some people might consider a taboo subject, but I believe it's so important and essential part of entrepreneurship and being an entrepreneur. I believe that, you know, one of the reasons why you open a business, right? Um, you know, one of the reasons why there is something that we call a business is because uh, a business is purpose is purpose to make profit, right? So unless we include the money and profit and profitability and prosperity in our conversation, you know, this this program will not be complete, right? So that's why today we're gonna look at the prosperity mindset. How can we tune in into that kind of vibrational frequency of you know? wealth and prosperity and abundance and 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 see that and, and and access that right for for me it was a time in in my life where i would believe that you know i I'm, i don't have access to any of that you know first of all i would believe that rich rich people are mean and because they take advantage of other people that's why they get rich right and so think about what kind of results can I get with that kind of mindset so so i had uh, you know on one side a belief that i want to get rich, I want to be, you know, wealthy, I want to help other people, I want to help my family. And on the other side, I had this belief that rich people are mean and they took advantage of the people and the only way for me to get rich is to take advantage of other people. And anyone that knows me, uh, they know that I'm I'm not I'm not the kind of, that kind of person. I will never take advantage of the people. So, you know, do you see the conflict there? So I had on one side, I wanted to get rich, I wanted to, you know, uh, live a, a, a wealthy, healthy life, and on the other side, I had this limiting belief that you know, um, rich people are mean. And so I don't know what you're facing right now when it comes to money or what kind of relationship we have with, with, with money. But I believe this will give you some some ideas here. This this maybe will will you know would scramble some eggs <laughs> for you. But I think if we leave this topic out, this program will be incomplete because. As I said, the purpose of a business is is to create profit, right? If you have a passion for something, if you if you want to do something and you're not interested in, in profit, then then you're probably running a, a non-profit, and 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 that that's you know there is a place for that too. But here we're talking about creating profit, right? So today we're gonna look at this uh, prosperous mindset, right? So let me let me share with you here, you know, some some slides, right? So. What we're looking at today is, you know, what mindset it's first of all, because uh, all throughout this program and all throughout this episode, we're going to talk about mindset, and and so we want to be on on the same page, right? So mindset is a set of attitude, beliefs, and expectation about a situation or an outcome. In this case, our beliefs, attitude, and expectations about money and how money work and and prosperity and wealth, right? And so if we go one step further and we look at attitude right so what attitude is attitude is not just what we see in the outside world attitude is a set of um, it's actually a composite of our thoughts our feelings and and our actions right the actions that we take so when we say someone has a bad attitude you know um what we're, we're referring to is we're referring to what we see on the outside right but everything starts with the thoughts that that person thinks and then you know how those thoughts reflect into the way they feel and then reflects into the outer results and the actions that they're they are taking, right? And so that's why it's so important for us to understand. That here we're looking at our thinking, right? Um, you know, we're not we're not looking at you know what to think. We, we, we're not telling you what to think, but we're looking at how to think and learning how to think as successful people, right? So let's let's dive into it, right? So the prosperous mindset. What we say here is more like you know the 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 shift and making that shift between believing that um, money is the root of all evil to looking at money as f- for the real purpose that money is created and and also <laughs> creating this what we call to be a happy money mindset right um, this is something by uh, Ken Honda so he wrote a book uh, called called money uh, happy money you know the 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 Japanese art of of you know um, you know valuing money and, and wealth and prosperity and so 
what what he shares there, right? One of the principles in in that book that I think it's key and that w- is kind of where we want to get is is you know being happy for for not only when we get money but also when we you know when we spend money, right? He he shares a principle, uh, you know, a, a word with us which which is arigato. Arigato means, uh, you know, I'm grateful for. It's, it's kind of a, a Japanese way of saying thank you, right? And and how can we be thankful when we spend our money as well as when we receive money, right? And uh, that's kind of where we want to get, right? And how do we develop, you know, this prosperity mindset? You know, from where does it start? You know, how, you know, how did we build what we have already? How did we acquire what we believe already about money? And so one thing that we're going to look at is like, you know, this is more more something that we tune into. This is a vibrational frequency. It's a, it's a, it's a thought. It's a feeling rather than being, uh, you know, uh, something that we acquire, right? So this is also what Wayne Dyer says, right? When he says that abundance is not something that we acquire, it's something that we tune into, right? So th- think about that. Um, I, I shared that there were there were times in my life where I believed that rich people are mean, right? And then that that belief drive my behavior because because I wouldn't even I would despise the rich, right? Uh, because you know when when I looked at what they had and the kind of experiences and vacations they had, I would say, well, the reason why I, I don't have is because they 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 have more, right? And then it's like this mindset this limiting belief uh, that there is a finite you know there is a limited amount of pie and the only the only way for for me to to get a bigger piece of the pie if someone else has a smaller piece of the pie and and in that case they had a, a bigger piece of the pie than, than than what i had right but when when we look at the boundaries when we when we understand this right we understand that there is enough for everyone and then if, if there is not enough we're gonna we're gonna you know create more right and and that that's one of the core beliefs. So if we get that, then we're able to build on it. But if we don't, uh, then we're going to struggle. We're going to be difficult, right? So you know, poverty and and, and abundance, you know, are are you know, it's they are they are two sides of the same coin, right? And right now I'm looking at the book called Thinking Rich by Napoleon Hill. And Napoleon Hill shares something of the sort that, you know, it takes no more effort for us to tune into um, the, the vibrational frequency of prosperity rather than, than poverty. And, and he says that no more effort is required to aim high in life, to demand abundance and prosperity, than is required to accept misery and poverty, Right. So what what he says actually he says that, and and we're gonna dive into this a little bit deeper. But what he says, if you think about mindset, right? So mindset it's what I think, right? It's the thoughts, the beliefs, and the actions that I take, right? And so if I think prosperity, or if I think poverty, it will not take any more effort. Now, if if you know, I'm I'm somewhere in Sweden now, in in a small city, but if I would think Paris right now, and whatever picture comes into your mind and in my mind about Paris, and I would think Tokyo, it wouldn't take me any more energy to think Paris than to think Tokyo, right? And so, if I can choose to think positive thoughts and to think in, in, in reinforcing thoughts, right? And, and, and to think prosperity rather to, than to think poverty. It wouldn't take me more effort. It wouldn't require more effort, right? Because, you know, it, it's the same process. You know, whatever I think gets translated in the way I feel. And what I feel then determines the action that I take, right? I give this example when I moved to Sweden, when I started my company in Sweden, that I believe that it will be difficult for me to start a company in Sweden. It will be difficult for me to get into the Swedish market. And so because I believe that, right, what happens is that uh, I created an expectation that it's going to be hard. That was the mindset that I, you know, approached the market with. And and think about that. If, if I believe it's going to be hard, then I'm going to look for all the evidence to support my belief, Right. And I'm going to see all the reasons why this is hard. 
for all the reasons why this was a bad decision. But on the other side, if I look at my uniqueness you know, and the values I bring to the table, then I say, well, okay, so because I'm not Swedish and because I have an international background, because I work with so many companies around Europe and Asia, then because of that experience, then I actually bring a unique perspective to the, to the table that someone without having that kind of experience and without having my, my background and my upbringing, they are not able to bring, right? In that case, I, I shifted my perspective, right? And then all of a sudden, I, I started seeing the possibilities and the opportunities for me in the marketplace. So what happens is, you know, it didn't took me more to think about how difficult this is going to be. And then it took me, you know, to think about how, how easy this is going to be because I'm bringing something, I'm bringing something different to the, to the marketplace. So what we're talking about here, we're talking about taking control over our thoughts, right? Because we said, the thoughts we think, right, are will, will be reflected in the, the way we feel, the feelings we feel in our body, and then that that will, will reflect into the actions that we're taking, right? If I'm if I'm confident that this is going to be difficult for me, then I'm probably not going to ask people to 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 buy my services or products or work with me, and so that's why it's 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 much about the mindset and the thinking than then uh, you know all, all the rest and it starts it starts here right so we need to work in here all right so let's look at some of the differences between you know a poverty mindset and and uh, and a prosperity mindset shall we so if we look at this um slide here so poverty mindset um you know would, would be someone that believes in misfortune bad chance and and bad luck as being so you know the the reason why they they are where they are, but but someone with a prosperity mindset, you know, they believe that you know money do not come to wishes, you know, they they come as a response to definite plans of of actions, right? So so this is where they take responsibility for the results compared to when we say we blame other people, like I blame you know the communist system or you know or the riches, the the communist party, right? Uh, you know. They control us. We, there's nothing I can do, right? So, so we kind of give our power away, if you like. And again, someone with a poverty mindset would would believe that you know money is the root of all evil. Um, compared to someone that has this prosperity mindset, they understand, um, you know, the purpose of money, right? And the purpose of money, you know, we're gonna cover that a little bit um, in in more details in in. in you know, later in this show, but but you know, it's just it's just um, money can do only two things, right? You know, money it's an idea, but it's an idea that you know most people have have accepted, right? So so today, if you go to the marketplace and you want to, you know, buy one hundred euros or one hundred dollars, right? Or, you know, they they will tell you precisely um, how much Swedish crowns you have to pay for that, right? And, and why? Because the you know the the world right the market right has agreed on the value of one dollar or one euro or one Swedish crown right. So 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 money it's 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 an idea that we all have agreed or or most people have agreed upon the value of it right. And 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 it's just a, an exchange of energy right. So when when I when I do what I do. When I serve people, when I create value for people, you know, I I I deliver that value to them, and then I get paid, right? So so those money, um, if you look at your bank account, it, it's, it's like storing energy, it's like a battery, right? So I store that energy in my bank account, so I can use it, I can displace it later on to pay for this hotel, to pay for the meal, right? To you know, to pay for the fuel, for whatever it is that I want, right? And and so if you think about money, money is just an idea, and money is just energy, and and the, the purpose of money it's very simple. One is to provide comfort for us and for our families, and second is to provide support beyond our physical presence. That's the only purpose of money. So money is not the root of all evil because money is just a magnifier. Money would not, you know. Uh, Money does not make people mean, right? They just, you know, unveil, they just reveal what it is already there, right? 
is just magnifying. If someone is a good person, they would be a good person with money too. If someone is a, you know, negative, maybe um, with bad intentions, they would be, you know, even even more negative with money. So that's why money is not the root of all evil. People are, and then and then that gets magnified with with money. But money can also do a lot of good in the world. And money does a lot of good in the world. So let's look. Let's look at another one, All right? So, so someone with the poverty mindset they look for the the you know the get quick rich schemes, right? When when someone with the prosperity mindset they know that prosperity only builds on trust and and values, right? Someone with the prosperity mindset would take responsibility for the future, compared to someone with the you know poverty mindset. You know, they, they they don't take charge for their destiny. They they wait for the government, for politicians, for you know other people to you know to do something for them. And and they kind of always blame someone else or something else. And if if only the taxes in Sweden would be lower, then I will open a business. Then then I will do something. But why why pay so much tax, right? So many people in Sweden limit themselves, you know, to j- just to stay under under a certain level, so they don't pay too, too much taxes, right? But th- that's that's stupid. Well, why would you want to limit yourself? Well, you know, to avoid taxes, right? Yeah, but, I mean, there, there's a reason for taxes, and, and, and you, you, would, you would earn more, you would have more, you would experience more. Yeah, but I don't want to pay taxes. Well, okay, then, then give away your power, give away your responsibility to other people, and then, you know, you know, then be happy with what you get from the social security system. I mean, why are you complaining right now? So, I mean, that's someone with a with 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 a poverty mindset, right? Rather than taking responsibility, they they blame other people. Let's look at another one. You know, they lack the ambition to be, do, and have more, right? They're they're you know they're complaining about about stuff like you know. Um, This is so funny because, you know, anytime I hear someone complaining, uh, you know, I kind of, I jump into this, you know, advice mode, right? So this is something that I do because I want to help uh, people when, when someone is complaining, I, I don't want to see them suffering, right? I, I, you know, it breaks my heart when I see, when I see them suffering. And I, and I try to say, well, you know what? I have the solution for, for, for your, for your problem. You know, look, now we're doing a, a you know, a 21 days, uh, free marathon through the book thinking glories right so we're taking this book by napoleon hill we're looking at it we're 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 studying every single chapter in it right so it's absolutely free right here is the link oh well i don't have the time you you just you just complain to me you just wanted more you say that i want more yeah but you know what you know but but you know florian but i don't have the time you don't see that i having a, i have a full-time job i have kids well then, 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 then you don't want more. I'm sorry. Then you don't want more. You deserve what you want, what you have. So, again, um, they're they're not looking for real fuller expression uh, expansion because uh, you know they they have created excuses. It's it just they just want to complain. Uh, let's look at some more. You know, think think about this one, right? Isn't that true that that someone with a poverty mindset they would want to, you know, get more than than what they give, right? You know, they want to get without, you know, giving a fair equivalent. That's why they go to gambling. Then that's why so many people play lotto and you know, and all of those, you know, rich, uh, quick get get quick rich schemes and um, or, 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 you know that's why so many people get uh, get caught up into these kind of schemes because they're looking for uh, for, for for something to, to to give less if they if they could to negotiate their way up and while you know someone with a prosperity mind they know that there is no way for you to negotiate your way your way up right you have to pay what you have to pay to get up right and they they work in congruence with this law of compensation, right? So the law of compensation they says that the amount of money that one person makes, it's in direct proportion with the need for what they do, their ability to do it, 
and the difficulty there is to replace them in the marketplace. Let me say that again. So, so the amount of money that one person can do, it's in direct proportion with the need for what I do, their ability to do it, and the difficulty there is to replace them into the marketplace. So think about that. Think about, you know, let's say my wife, right? She's a psychiatrist. She's a, she's a medical doctor. She's really, really good at what she does. But there's also a big need for her in the marketplace. So she has nothing to do with the need. She has not created the need for, for psychiatrists, right? But she's good at what, what she does, right? So, so if you chose a niche or, or, or a market or an industry where there's a need for your type of services, then, then, you, then, then you're already set because there is nothing you, do, you, you can do about the need, right? You haven't created the need for your services. But then what is in your control is your ability to deliver it, to do it, right? Because remember, the need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty to replace you in the marketplace. In other words, like, you know, how big of a need there is for doctors, you know, how good my wife is to deliver her, her services, and how many other doctors are available right now to, you know, to take that assignment or, or, or to, to, to fill that role, right? So what you could do, you could, you could work on that middle factor there, right? This is where you could take responsibility for yourself. And someone with a prosperity mindset understand this law and understand that the only way for them to you know, create more health, wealth, and prosperity in their lives is to take responsibility of their own development and become you know, one of the best people that they can be in, in that industry. So that way, even, even if they are other people, if their ability to do it one of the best, then then there will always be, you know, um, there will always be jobs for them, right? And so these are kind of the differences between the poverty mindset and prosperity mindset, right? But there's also something interesting that Napoleon Hill shares in, in the book Thinking of He says that a poverty consciousness, or that's that's another word for, for to say mindset, right? So a poverty mindset develops without conscious application of habits favorable to it. The money consciousness must be created to order unless one is born with such a consciousness. So let me say that again and, and let, 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 let's look at, at this a little bit. So a poverty consciousness develops without conscious application of habits favorable to it. In other words, if we don't do anything to develop a prosperity and a money consciousness, what he says is that the poverty consciousness will develop without any conscious application of the habits favorable to it. In other words, if we don't take responsibility and we are not aware of what we allow in our mind, like for example, everything we fed, we feed our mind with, Poverty will take over. Why? It's because look at the media, look at the news, look at look at how easy it is to see poverty around you. Look at look at how easy you go to you know to Romania. You, you, you just you know walk on the street and you could very easily see see maybe someone homeless on the street. And that's that's a sign, right? That will be registered into your subconscious mind as, as a sign of poverty. You know, open up the the the, the media. You know, uh, whatever media outlet you're you're tuning in to to get your news, and and you know, ninety percent of the news would be negative news, and and most of them would would just kind of confirm or reinforce, you know, this scarcity and poverty mindset. And what Napoleon Hill says is, unless we take control, and we consciously build this money consciousness or, or prosperity consciousness or, or abundance consciousness, the poverty consciousness will take over. So this is this is critically important. So unless we tune into you know lessons like this one and, and shows like this one and we think about how can we create a prosperity mindset, poverty mindset would would be taking over just because we are so much bombarded by that 
and it, there are so many people that have maybe uh, uh, you know maybe a different agenda and they're pushing news and information into the world with a different agenda and unless we close our mind towards those things and we kind of just keep you know very very strict you know uh, very strict rules very strict um, I'll say filter right for what it that what it is that we allow in our mind uh, we're go, we're gonna we're gonna you know, we're gonna struggle to create creating this this prosperity mindset right so again this is this is interesting but it's it's still about money mindset right this is about thinking it didn't say anything else than just uh, you know the poverty mindset develops without conscious application of habits favorable to it right and 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 unless we take responsibility for creating the money consciousness or the money mindset you know um that that will that will order and and look at this one too so so both poverty and riches are the offsprings of thought now th think about that both poverty poverty and riches are the results of thought in other words now that's why we're looking at the mindset before we're looking at any you know tools that can create wealth we need to develop the mindset we need we need to look to work on, on our thinking right so let's let's look at what's the purpose of money because i think this is an important thing if we can cover that i think you know this will this will speak if, for many of you right so the purpose of money, you know, as I shared, there is only two purposes for money, right? So look at this quote here. You know, money doesn't make you happy, but it gives a zone of comfort around you, right? We, we just we just touched briefly on that. So that that's one of the purposes. And 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 wealth is not about having a lot of money, but it's about having a lot of options, right? And so the two purposes for money, one is to provide support beyond our physical presence, right? So I'm I'm sitting here in Sweden in this hotel room, you know, um, sharing this with you, and you know, my money, you know, helps my family. You know, I'm I'm helping. I'm able to help my family. I'm not able to travel to Romania this year. I might be able to travel later on, but for the last eighteen months, I have not been in Romania, right? But I'm able to help them. You know, beyond 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 my physical presence, right? Um, you know, if if you contribute to any charity, right? That's again, that charity, you know, does work in the world where you're not able to be, right? Uh, you're not there, but money does that, right? And the second one here is that money provides comfort for us and our loved ones, our loved ones, you know. So 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 we're being more more creative, right? So the moment that I'm able to you know, move beyond those uh, basic needs on, on the Maslow pyramid, then I'm able to be more creative. Then I'm able to, you know, um, bring more value, create more value, right? So so this is actually the two reasons why, you know, uh, why we want money, right? This is what money can do, right? It provides support beyond our physical presence and it provides comfort for us and, and, and our close ones, right? So how can we develop this prosperous mindset, right? Let's look at some things that we can do. Now, the first thing we could do is to look at our beliefs about money, right? So, so what I mean by that is that if you, I, I don't know what kind of upbringing you had, but in my case, the kind of conversation we had around the kitchen table about money, they were not about prosperity and abundance. They were about lack and limitation, right? I remember there were times in my life when I had to sit in, you know, in the queue, uh, you know, at, at, the, at the local kind of, we call that grocery store today, but it was not, no, not a grocery store, it was, was you, know, uh, you know, a very little store where I had this little booklet, right, uh, you know, with, with each month we got one of these ones, and, and there were like, you know, um, there were ratios for, for food, there were ratios for bread, there were ratios for salami, there were ratios for milk. So I was in the in the in the queue and, and that was not something that was given to us. So I, we have to pay for it, but we couldn't buy as much as I want. So that was you know just after you know the, the communist system collapsed in Romania. So I was 
you know, I was programmed with all of these beliefs about money, right? I was programmed that, you know, people, in order to get rich, took advantage of other people, right? That was, you know, you had to be part of the Communist Party in order to move ahead, right? And then the only reason for me uh, that, that, that we didn't have enough here was because other people had more, right? So those were the beliefs that I started with, right? So unless I start to challenge those beliefs, right? And I work on them and, and I challenge them and I analyze how do they show up into, in my life today. I'm not able to really tune into this prosperity and wealth you know, mindset. And, and, I'm, and I'm wrestling with it, right? And I'm, I'm working. This is work in progress, right? I think this is, um, this is one of the areas that I, I struggle most, right? And, and, and I'm working on that. Um, but I don't know where you are. You want to analyze, you know, what had happened, you know, what kind of conversation did you have around the kitchen table with, with, your, with your family, right? Um, you know, what kind of discussions did you have, in, in, you know, about money, if you had any discussion, right? Because, you know, that's, that's before the age of seven when all of these things have been programmed into our mind and now we're kind of fighting with, with them because they show up in, in our life and unless we use our conscious awareness now to look at them, to analyze them, do they even serve us? Are they even true, right? And and gradually change them and replace them with better serving beliefs. Um, we, we're gonna st- we're gonna still create the same results that we have up until now. So um, absolutely, look at the, our, our beliefs about money, right? Then then we need to build a new relationship with money, and this is kind of what I just share, right? How do, th- this is how we do it, right? We look at what we believe, and then we see how we have, you know used money or or money have used used us you know are we are we one of my mentors Paul Martin Lee shared this and, and calls it, is, is this um, uh, are you the master of money or 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 money is your master right are you are you putting your money to work for you or do you work for money because because that's that's a big difference right so so this is where we need to re rethink and rebuild and and re create a relationship with money, right? If we don't have a healthy relationship with money, where money should work for us, we, we should not work for money. Um, again, another thing that, that I started to do uh, lately is, is, you know, notice the prosperity and abundance, you know, all around all around us. You know, what I mean by that is, um, you know, I, I, I just shared a little bit that, you know, an exercise that we do is we look for, for prosperity and abundance. And, and then, now I'm looking with a different filter. I'm not looking for to see where other people, you know, stay at, you know, this expensive hotel or what kind of cars other people um, live. I'm, 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 sorry, drive. I'm looking for uh, to see well if if these people are able to, you know, create what what they have created for themselves. Um, let me analyze some of some of their stories. Like, like let, let me look so, of some of their success stories, and let let me look how how they created wealth, right? And when you start analyzing that, when you start to look around you, you you're gonna look, you're gonna find out that most people have worked hard and worked smart for you know being where they are, right? And 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 then if you look at how they have created the businesses that they have today, you will see that, you know, you will find so many examples. Like, think about Sweden, Denmark are, are, are two countries that export technology. I think about from where technology does it come, right? Technology comes from, you know, innovation and is, is more or less thinking, right? So, so, so what they're exporting, they're not exporting, you know, coal or, or iron or, you know, would they, they might export that too, but that's not the primary, you know, source of income. And and you know, if you think about that, they export intelligence. They export intelligence. So so all of these, you know, all of these companies that have been, uh, you know, create like for example Spotify, right? Think about Spotify. They have created value out of nothing. I mean I mean th- there was an opportunity there that we could. We could listen to music in a different way, but but you know, think about how many other companies like like Spotify have created something, a service, a product out of out of nothing, if you think, 
you know, out of nothing, just 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 an idea, right? So there is there is so much available around us, and there is so much abundance around us. It's just that we need to start seeing it, and not not look at all the lack and limitation. And and when we do that, then we're gonna see opportunities rather than say seeing just challenges, right? So the next thing here is to acknowledge that this is available to you too, right? Because when I started to you know, look at this. I didn't believe that this would be available for me. I thought that, you know, this is available for other people. And because of my, you know, upbringing from Romania and, you know, my, my background and everything, this is not available to me. But then I started to look at so many success stories of people that started, you know, much lower. I mean, much lower than I started. And, and then if they could do it, then I could do it. So this will be available for me too. You know, I remember my you know, my friend Nandim Iqbal, so he's one of the most successful, you know, accountants in um, in London. And he is from Pakistan, right? So he shared with us some pictures of how his school looked like. I mean, imagine this, you know, into kind of a semi-desert area, a tree, like a tree in the middle of that kind of savanna. And their lessons were taking place under that tree. That was the school. That, that was that was the classroom for them, and 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 then he shared with us when in, in the rainy season, you know, the the water would flood kind of that area. They will not go to school. And and you know, starting from them and from there and working his way up, right? You know, to own a, you know one of the most successful you know accounting practices in in London. I mean, talk about things not being available to to you and I, right? I mean, he if he could do it, you know, I could do it. Uh, another example, my mentor, Paul Martinelli, right? He started as a janitor. He started, you know, he's, he's a high school dropout. And he built five, not one, five multi-million dollar businesses. I mean, if he can do it, I can do it. So the whole idea is here is to, to acknowledge that, that, this abundance, this prosperity, it's also available to you and I. It's not only for other people. We can have access to it too if we work and if we want to have access to it too. And the next thing here is to tune into this vibrational frequency of, of wealth and prosperity. And, and the way we do that is, you know, to hang around these people, right? So, so you know, uh, I think Les Brown said that if, if you are... Um, you know, you are the average of the five people you spend most time with, right? So if we want to, you know, build prosperity and wealth for ourselves, right? Then then we should start to surround ourselves with people that are more successful at that than than we are, right? And and kind of learn from them and then hang around them, right? And then go visit places, right? Go visit places that um, um where where these people hang around. You 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 don't you don't have to. You know, you don't have to see yourself, you know, different than they are. You, 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 I mean, you, you could have access to that. I mean, I remember, uh, I mean, that that's one of the practices that I, I have. You know, I, whenever I visit a new city, I'm looking for the most expensive place, the most expensive restaurant, the most expensive, you know, uh, hotel in town. And I want to go there, visit it a little bit, but at least... You know, if it's a hotel, I, I like to go into the lobby and, and I work there, you know, and tune in kind of in the vibrational frequency and kind of the, you know, the spirit of, of that of that place. Right. And, and you know, and, and see and observe how other people that, you know, check in on that hot, in that hotel behave and, 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 you know, how do they act and, and kind of, you know, look. Is this the kind of life I would like to live? And if yes, then 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 you know you're in the right place. So you're kind of tuning in to vibrational frequency of of prosperity, right? And and then the last one is kind of to expand our awareness of what's possible, right? So this is again what we looked before at you know looking at other people that have been successful from you know humble you know uh, start and and then and look at what's possible by exploring life. So exploring. You know, exploring and thinking about you know what what kind of you know what's the the newest you know kind of business that we're um, you know is is now let's say flourishing. Um, 
whatever whatever that is to expand your awareness think about now for example i just got a, you know a newsletter from richard browser where where they're now preparing um the, you know this is july 2021 they're going to have the the first you know um space flight right you know this is commercial space flight you know, the first one you know and he is part of the team and think about that if if we believe that it's not possible for us to just uh, you know create a business that sustain our our life think about that you know something that my mentor paul says he says that anything is possible and and anything will work right so anything it doesn't matter you know if you believe your idea will work or not you know, just give it a try because anything will work. If you if you if you give it a try, you will see that anything will work. If if you stick to it and if you stay with it, if it's built on trust, it will work. Absolutely. So the whole idea here is to build what Ken Honda calls this happy money, right? And the key to building that happy money mindset and you know be comfortable with money is, is that you know. What he says is that this doesn't come, um, you know, from from the you know outside. This is something that comes from the inside, and and even you know long before money even flow our, our way, right? So what he says is, is is all about the mindset. It's not about having having money having money to be happy, but it's about a mindset, right? So it's about a mindset. It's not about the money, and then you say, well. If I would have the money, I would be more happy. Well, that's not that's not the mindset. You know, the mindset we're looking for is to be happy with what you have. You know, and and actually never satisfied. Be 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 grateful for what you have, but be never satisfied. And always look for for a fuller expansion and fuller expression. And and I think that that's what the key is, right? All right. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. And next week we're gonna look at. Um, the last episode in this series here, we're going to look at the problem-solving mindset, right? So uh, we, we're going to continue the, the Entrepreneurial Mindset Show, but we're going to bring different topics. Now we looked at the 12 different mindsets, and now this problem-solving, it's kind of a bonus one, because I realized, well, I mean, uh, you know, a program like this will not be complete unless we introduce, we, we, we introduce money, we talk about money, but also, you know, how entrepreneurs are actually problem solvers you know you, you know the reason for you having a business the reason for me having a business is that we solve a problem right so so i think this problem solving mindset it's a it's quite um quite an important one so next week we're going to look at the problem solving mindset and i look forward to see you on on monday at, at 5 p.m right and how can we build you know this mindset of solving problems from the inside out rather than the in the outside in okay Okay, so that's what I wanted to share with you. I thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope um, this brought some value to you, maybe some different perspectives, and I look forward to see you on the next one. All right, take care. Bye-bye.